what would a guy like Bart Ehrman say to your books? Have you talked to Bart Ehrman ever before? Has he read your books? Do you know? And has he, what, what do you think his thoughts are? Well, he should have read one of them because I gave him a copy. But I don't know. it. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is he's tone deaf to Mimesis criticism. And I've told him that. I said in the next edition of his introduction to the New Testament, he needs to consider, at least in the margins, the uh, the role of classical Greek literature and so on. And I'm, I'm really very disappointed that he's tone deaf on it. I can give you an example. He and I were on a, uh, and we are friends, and I admire his work. And uh, I don't know what he thinks of mine, but he doesn't. It doesn't make much use of it. We were on a, a panel together you know, on the um, on Judas Iscariot, and he gave a kind of traditional form critical uh, assessment of uh, Judas Iscariot, which I considered to be altogether wrong, and argued that Judas Iscariot plays the role of Melantho in the Odyssey, and that was Mark's model for it. And Bart had never considered it. Let me, this is an opportunity maybe to say something that I find to be frustrating. It's, there are relatively few people in my field who know my work and have chosen to challenge it. It's more common for them to ignore it. And the problem of having work ignored is it's impossible who's ignoring it and how do you how do you you can't force people to read your work and to interact with it you can't ignore everything and at some point you have to say yes something like this is going off going on maybe mcdonald has over um, interpreted it and seen it in places where it is not but um the the best way to kill a hypothesis is not by arguing against it it's by ignoring it and i feel your your pain like uh i I can empathize with you that uh, I, a lot of people ignore my work on YouTube and uh, I can't force them to watch my videos, but you know, I try.